Your Raspberry Pi is an awesome tool for your Internet of Things project. You can even create your own mini IoT platform with it. I have here my Raspberry Pi and 3 DHT22 and DHT11 sensors. Using only Python, Flash, and WebSocket, then you can create your own Raspberry Pi powered weather station. The values are updated in real time and you can see the values here in both text and in graphical chart format. The tabs here will show you the graphical chart for each of your sensor readings and I have programmed it to auto-populate the charts automatically. As you can see, it is possible to receive and display your sensor readings with no delay with only your Raspberry Pi. The web application you see here is developed inside your Raspberry Pi. Right now, you are only seeing three records but by changing your Python Pi and adding more DHT sensors here, then it will display the values of your new sensors. The full video is in the description. Hi! Welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, I am going to show you how you can display the sensor readings of your multiple DHT22 and DHT11 sensors using only your Raspberry Pi. The idea for this video was requested by one of my readers for my previous video if it is possible to support the display of multiple DHT sensors on that project. At the same time, if you can add multiple sensors in the code and the web application will display it dynam dynamically. Right now, we are only seeing three records of DHT22 sensors or DHT11 sensors here, but if you wanted to add a new DHT sensors, then it should display the four records. Later, I would show you how this can be done in the code. As you can see from this web application, there is the current values boxes here, which displays the values of each of my DHT22 or DHT11 sensors. There's also a tab here, which will display the graphical chart of all the historical or the line chart and the gauge chart for each of my DHT sensors. If I tab in with another tab, then the, the graph will display the values or the current values for that particular DHT sensors. For the wiring and the schematic, since I have only three physical DHT22 and DHT11 sensor, then I have attached it with the following GPIO pins. Just make sure that the ground, the VCC, and pins are all interconnected. Now, let's go into the code. So, this is my Raspberry Pi right now. And if we try running the application using this command, then you would notice that it is now sending the data. And I'll try to refresh it. And as you can see, the values that are coming from the 3DHT sensors that I have here is being displayed by my boxes here. And the graph also displays the values accordingly in both the line chart and the gauge. If we take a look at the code of the program, then you would notice that I am printing the current values that is being displayed or being gathered from the 3DHT sensors that I have. And if you click the DHT2 tab here, then you would notice that the gauge chart and the line chart has refreshed. And if you check the values, which is the 33 here, and the temperature is also 33, and the line chart here is displaying also the values that is being retrieved from that particular DHT sensor. And now let's go into the code. So the only difference from this code from the other one is that I have added now three more sensors, DHT sensors, on my app.py. And in my app.py, I have created a list. So this list will list all of the sensors that is currently connected to my Raspberry Pi. And this list is also being used in the index.html in here. As you can see from the plus route here, you would notice that I am passing the list that I have here. The reason why I am passing the list into this index.html page 
is because the index.html page is dynamically displaying the list of DHT modules that I currently have in my system. So if we take a look at the code of this program, you would see that there is a for loop here. The for loop will loop through all the DHT modules that was passed from my app.py and it draws the corresponding HTML markup so that I would be able to show it here. So in this case here, you're seeing three because I have enrolled only three. And as you can see, there is uh, three modules here or boxes here that shows the current readings of my temperature and humidity for each of the DHT sensors. The other thing that I have here is I use tabs. So there is this, these are bootstrap code that displays tabs. So I'm using loops also for this particular project so that I can display multiple tabs for each of the DHT sensors that I have in my project. So looking at the project right now, there are three records that I have created. So there are three tabs that was created by my web application. In order for us to handle these changes, then we need to handle this into our JavaScript program. So this is the code for my index.js. It's almost similar to the previous index.js in my previous code. The only difference is I have to handle the tabs right now. So as you can see, I still have the array here that will save for records of the last 12 readings of our temperature and humidity. And now I have created some, some more code in here. So for example, there is the event listener that I have added to load wherein it will draw all the charts. So right now I, I am looping through all of the number of sensors that I have in the program. As you can see, the number of DHT sensors here is counting the values from the uh, input type that I have in my HTML page. If you go back to my index.html page, then you would notice that there is uh, an input type hidden here. And it, whatever the length of the DHT modules that was passed, it will be assigned to this particular input type hidden variable, which I access with my JavaScript in here. So using that particular input type, then I can do a loop. And then for each loop, I'm going to create chart for each of the HTML elements so that I can draw all of the corresponding charts. The reset chart here will basically update our charts boxes in the web application. And this is called whenever I click the tabs that I have in here. So you can see that it is calling the reset charts. The code for the here that you're seeing is similar to what I have done in the past. These are configuration details that are needed for each of the platly.js part. And for the utility function that will update the gauge, the update the chart, they are almost similar. The only changes is that it is now passing an ID. So the ID that is coming from, from my WebSocket server if we take a look at the code right now, this is the code. And if we click F12, then you would notice that there is a message that comes in here. So this is the ID that you are seeing. And there is a value of the readings for that particular DHT sensors. So basically, whatever the changes that I did in the previous post or previous video, the only changes here is the ID tab but the code is almost similar. So for the socket IO code, the program is still the same. Uh, the only thing is that the message that is coming that is, does not just come from one DHT sensors, but from multiple DHT sensors. As I have mentioned, we can edit the code so that we can add more DHT sensors on our program. So let's try to do it here. So I'm just going to clear and we're going to edit one of our pro project, which is the app.py. As you can see, I'm only adding the three records in here. However, if we try adding a new record in here, so for example, 
let's comment out this one and then I'm going to add a new set of records like this one and I attach it into my, the digital 17, 27, and 22 GPIO pin and then I created a new list in here and then added the three new sensor records. Now, if I save this one and then let's try running the project again. And I'm just going to refresh. Right now, you're only seeing three. If we try Control R or refresh, then you would see that I, I now have six records that I have in my project. So the, this is the record. It's coming. The record is now coming in. So that's basically how the project works and how easy it is to add more sensors in this particular project. So by just using your Raspberry Pi, you can turn it into a mini IoT platform that can display multiple DHT sensor readings. The code for this project, including the write-up, should you like to check the code, is available in the description of this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!